welcome friends to this uh, second day of our two-day event in Corfu, Greece. I'm very happy to be here again and to see all my friends. Before I do the meditation I promised, I want to tell you a little event that happened this morning. I got an email from a friend saying, I have full faith in God, I believe in God, why can't I see God? Will there be a time when I will be able to see God? So I had to send a reply. I said, nobody has ever seen God. You cannot see God. Reason is very simple. We are separated from God in our awareness now and we think we are a body. We are still part of God. Nothing is outside of God. Nothing at all is outside of God. So we are not aware that we are inside God, therefore we think we have to find God and see Him. When by meditation we leave this body, don't be aware of the body, we come closer to God. Because we have removed one layer of our separation. When we through deep meditation go to the inner body, our causal mind, we have come even closer to God. When we leave our mind behind and become soul, we have come very close to God. Now we are in God and we are also in awareness separated from God when we are a soul. When you want to see God and come even closer, I disappear, the soul disappears because part of God. So you can become part of God, but not see God. If you could see God, that means you are separate from God. Then God is incomplete. That is not the truth about God. There is nothing outside of God. This whole show is taking place inside God. But we can meet people who are closer to God. Somebody who has done meditation and has gone to the stage where he knows his soul, he's very close to God. So when we see that person, we say he's a very God-like person. A person who has merged himself in God has become like God. We see that person here, we are almost the best way of seeing God. It is the awareness, how much you know that matters. If we don't know we have a soul, we are very ignorant. If we don't know God is inside us, we are very ignorant. By meditation we can find out that God is inside us and yet it looks like if we are all in God, then how can He be inside each one of us? Let me give an example. When we go to sleep, we see many people in the sleep. 
a dream. Supposing in a dream we see 20 friends and we are sitting with them. And we are talking to each other and saying, are we dreaming or are we awake? And everybody says, but who is dreaming? We are 20. Are we all dreaming or only one? We can count 20 people. But when we wake up, there is only one dreamer. The remaining 20 were part of the dream. Now, if I were to say all 20 people are within that one dreamer, it would not be wrong. We are all part of God's dream. We are so many, but when we wake up, finally, ultimate waking up, it will be only one God. The self merges and becomes the same as God. The self does not remain self as a separate being, but becomes part of the ultimate reality, which is only one God. I wanted to share this answer I gave to that friend of mine. I thought it will be of general interest that people say, I want to see God, and you cannot see God because you are inside God. And by the time you get the awareness of God, you become the same as God. So that is why seeing is separation. You cannot separate from God. God operates within ourselves. <laughs> yesterday, yesterday I promised that we will do some meditation. Are you all ready for a little meditation? Anybody not ready? <laughs> okay. Everybody ready for meditation. Uh, I will do two simple exercises before we meditate. Two simple exercises before we meditate. First exercise is called the orange juice experiment. How many of you have done it with me before? How many have never done it? Okay. Plenty of newcomers. We'll do the orange juice experiment is designed to tell us how our attention operates in the body. If you do this, you it's a help to you later on to put your attention inside your head. In this experiment, we will imagine that we are made of glass. We are hollow inside. A hollow body made of glass and totally empty. Then with our imagination, we will fill it up with orange juice. We will start from the feet and gradually fill up the whole body, the legs, the torso, the arms, right up to the top of the head with orange juice by imagination. Then I will tell you there are valves, valves in the fingertips. When we press the fingertips, orange juice goes out. If you press gently, orange juice goes out drop by drop. If you press hard, it goes faster. <coughs> Similarly, we have valves in the toes of our feet. When you press the toes, the orange juice goes out. If you press them gently, it goes out drop by drop. If you press hard, it goes out quickly. Now please 
remain stationary on your chairs because you are going to be made of glass and you don't want to crack yourself by moving. Close your eyes and imagine that you are hollow inside and you are filling yourself with orange juice starting from the feet. Watch the orange juice going up your legs. Watch the orange juice going up your torso. See the orange juice filling up your arms and your hands. See the orange juice goes to the top of your head. Check the whole body, there is no empty space. Check the body again, no empty space. Now gently press the fingers of your hands and allow the orange juice to go out drop by drop. And keep watching the level of the orange juice in your head. When it reaches the eye level, stop. Hold it there. Do it slowly. Hold at the eye level. Now press the fingers again and allow the orange juice to come down to the nose level, tip of the nose. And hold it there. Now press the fingers again and let the orange juice come down to the level of your mouth, your lips. Hold it there. Now press the fingers again and let the orange juice go down to the middle of your throat. Hold it there. Now press only the fingers of your right hand and press them firmly. Let the orange juice go rapidly out of the right arm. Make sure there is nothing left in the arm. You can slightly move the arm if you think any orange juice is sticking there. Now press the fingers of the left hand only. Press them firmly, let the orange juice go rapidly out of the left hand. Make sure there is no orange juice in the left arm. If anything is sticking there, shake slightly and get it off your left arm. Now notice that the uh, orange juice has come to the level of your heart. Hold it there. <coughs> now press the toes of your finger, feet. Gently. And let the orange juice go down to the level of your navel, of your belly button. Hold it there. Now press the toes of your right foot only. 
and press hard so that all the orange juice flows out from the right leg very fast. Make sure there is no orange juice in the right leg. If you notice any trace, you can move the leg slightly to get the orange juice out. Now press the toes of the left foot. Press hard and let orange juice go out rapidly. Now examine the whole body. There should be no orange juice sticking anywhere. If you notice any orange juice, see if you can move slightly to get the orange juice out. Keep your eyes closed till I count five. One, two, three, four, five. Open your eyes and welcome back. <laughs> How many of you could successfully do this? Very good. How many had difficulty doing it? <coughs> Two of them. Okay. What was the purpose of doing this? It was simply to tell you, you can place your attention anywhere in the body you like. I drew your attention from point to point and you were able to hold the attention wherever I was saying hold the attention. This means if I say hold your attention behind the eyes, you will more easily be able to do it. Now, after this experiment, it becomes easier. You know what attention is. You just used it in this experiment. Two people could not do it. Two people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, they got the message. Okay. He was putting his attention inside. Good beginning. We'll do one more exercise. In this exercise, you will think that this body of yours is a house you live in. The six chakras below, which are centers of energy at the eyes, in the throat, in the heart, in the navel, in the genitals, these six centers are centers of energy. We will assume they are floors, six floors in this house. Right now, we are sitting in the sixth floor of our house. In this exercise, you will cover the floor of the sixth floor with a nice carpet. Place a chair there. Place a side table there. Like I have here. And on the table place a vase or vase of flowers. And next to the flowers place a drink. And next to the drink place a snack on a plate. Imagine these things are already there. <coughs> then I will give you instructions what to do. So close your eyes, imagine all this next to you, and I'll give you more instructions. From the side table, pick up the flowers and bring them in front of you. Look at the flowers. Are these the flowers that you imagined will be there? 
Are they different? Turn the flowers around. Do they still look the same? Bring them to your nose and smell them. Do you recognize this fragrance? Look at the flowers again. Have they changed the color? Put the flowers back on the table. Pick up the drink and look at it. Is this your favorite drink? Take one sip. How does it taste? Take one more sip. Has the taste changed? Put the drink back on the table. Pick up the snack. Take one bite. Is this your favorite snack? Do you remember the taste? Take one more bite. Does it still taste the same? Put the snack back on the table. Keep your eyes closed till I count five. One, two, three, four, five. Open your eyes. You will notice that after these exercises, I rub my face and my hands and, and my knees. If you do deep meditation, this process helps you to come back into physical self very quickly. So it's just become a habit with me. How many of you were able to see the flowers? How many of you saw flowers that were not what you imagined? How many of you could smell the flowers? How many of you smelt a new fragrance today? How many of you recognize the drink? How many of you found it tasted different today? How many of you enjoyed the snack? How many of you got a surprise with the snack? Very good. How many of you still have a taste of the snack in your mouth? Very good. What was the purpose of this exercise? That there were no snacks, no flowers, no physical flowers, yet you experienced all of them. This shows sense perceptions work independently of the objects outside. Which eyes saw the flower, not these eyes? They were inner eyes. Which tongue tasted the food and the drink? It's not outside tongue, it was inner tongue. We have these sense perceptions in the inner body and they operate even when this body is not there. This experiment will help you in identifying your inner body when you start working with the inner body behind the eyes more quickly. Some of you say that you saw different flower than you imagined. Where did the difference come from? They were not based on the flower that you see here, nor the flower you imagined. Those flowers exist independently at a different level. Yes. 
you just had access because you put attention on those flowers inside you were able to see some flower that exist only inside did you any one of you see flower that was emitting light or color and, and that you could see them uh, with, with some radiance Yes. Yes, these flowers that you saw, which were not like the flower that you imagined, exist there anyway. So you can sometimes have access to those. By meditation, we'll be able to see everything that exists there. Now we will do some meditation. We will meditate upon the self. The self that is sitting behind the eyes. We will imagine we are sitting inside this house on the sixth floor. And we can imagine that there is elevator running behind the house that goes to all the floors. The elevator is actually running along the spine behind the back. There's a staircase that goes in front from one level to another level, all the way six levels. Imagine this is the shape of your house built like a human body. And you are now at the sixth floor, well decorated, there's a chair in which you can sit on it. Now close your eyes and sit on that chair comfortably. Imagine you are relaxing in that chair. No tension. Don't think of anything except what is in front of you. See any darkness in front, any colors coming, any pictures coming. Just watch them without moving from the chair. Don't move forward. Stay as back relaxed as you can on the chair. Now stand up on the floor and sit down again. See if you can look at a window on the right side. Can you see a window on the left side? Do you see a light on top? Is the light coming down towards you? Stay very comfortably quiet. Do not move from the center. Don't go sideways. Right behind the eyes. Relax. If you know some holy word to repeat, start repeating them slowly. If you have any mantra, repeat it slowly. Very slowly. Listen to the words you are repeating. No other thought. Only what is happening around you. See if you can sing a little song in very slow volume. Still sitting in the chair.
Can you still see the window on the right side with light on it? If you, if you can see the window with a white light on the right side, get up from the chair and move towards it. You will see your body has no weight. You can fly and you can walk easily. If you like to go outside the window, go out. You'll be able to fly. Fly into the sky outside. Crawl out of the window carefully and fly in the sky. Go upwards. Look down if, if you can see things on the, uh, on the planet Earth. Fly high, more high. Fly at high speed. See the breeze going across. Feel the breeze going across. Enjoy your flight. Now turn back towards the window. And go back into the window and come back into your beautiful room. Walk back and sit on the chair again. And smile and wonder at the good experience you had. Keep your eyes closed till I count five. One, two, three, four, five. Open your eyes. Welcome back. How many of you could do this? Oh, many. I am very happy. How many of you were able to stand up when I said stand up? How many of you could actually fly outside? Very good. How many of you flew at a high speed? So many. It's just a meditational experience. This body did not go anywhere. This body sitting here, then who went? You remember? The same self that is in the body, the same self went out. It was not somebody else flying. You were flying. That is the permanence of self in every experience. This experiment is only a brief meditation session to show, show you that when we withdraw our attention, that whole experience will become not only real experience, but a very vast universe will be discovered that by flying there. You can spend a lot of time in that astral plane which you just visited. Some people spend many years just enjoying that. But if you want to go higher, then you have to do a deeper meditation. Then the very body that was sitting on the chair has to meditate. The very self that flew out of the window, that has to meditate. And that meditation has to be inside the head of that inner body. It needs a lot of practice. It needs a lot of practice to first do it in this body, then you will be able to do it in the other body. If you are able to go within that body, you will find sense perceptions are merely a created thing. With, a, with your mind, you can perceive everything at once. Don't have to separate seeing and touching and tasting separate. 
προσλάβουν τα πάντα με μια. Δεν χρειάζεται να έχει μια διαφορετική όσταση, όραση και. Do you recall that the color of the sky which you flew in was grey, not too light, not too dark? You can have a glimpse of the higher sky at the second stage, caudal plane, which is very bright and is orange coloured, gold coloured. Every sky will be different in your meditation. And that will tell you where you are at any point. This is just a short session of meditation I did with you as an experiment. So that to tell you there is so much insight which you can find just by simple placing of your attention behind the eyes. When you were flying outside in the sky, this body was breathing normally, heart was beating normally. You never left this body, you just had the experience of outer body. You can have all the experiences right up to merger with God without leaving this body. Stage by stage you can get it with good guidance. You are all seeking the same truth that I am seeking. We are co-travelers. Only I might have been doing it a little longer. But that does not mean that there is anybody lacking this opportunity. and the capability to do it. Everybody has that capability because we all have attention and we all have imagination. People do breathing exercises, pranayam, they do other things with physical energy centers. Remember, energy is not the same thing as awareness. With breathing exercises, you can have a better body. By energizing your centers below, you can become more strong. By doing yoga practices, you can keep the body in good shape. But you don't get higher awareness. Higher awareness starts from behind the eyes and does not allow the attention to go below. That is why these perfect living masters recommend you don't have to go down into energy, come back again to the two eyes and then start. Start right from here and go up. The yogic exercises and the asanas were prescribed by yogis because they used to meditate in a cave. These old yogis, they used to make a cave in the bluff of a hill or a mountain and there they made small caves, sat inside and meditated. They had very little space to exercise. Therefore, they developed certain postures to take within the cave by which they could get exercise. 
Και έτσι ανέπτυξαν διάφορε στάσει τι οποίε θα μπορούσαν να κάνουν μέσα στο σπίτι και να κάνουν φυσικέ ασκήσει. They wrote down, told for others what position you can take in a small space so all the body can get exercise. Και σημειώσαν αυτέ τι θέσει και τι δώσαν σε άλλου έτσι ώστε να ξέρουν και αυτοί τι στάσει μπορούν να κάνουν έτσι ώστε να διατηρήσουν το σώμα του. In the old books, they have recorded 84 positions of the body, which you can take to keep the body in a fit state. They did not go out jogging and doing other exercises. They did everything in the cave. That was the whole purpose of the 84 asanas, 84 postures that we prescribed in yoga. They also did exercise with breathing. Because the word pran is used for breath of life, and also mean life. When we say somebody died, we say pran is gone, and pran also means life. Pran also means breath. So pranayam has been taken to be just a breathing exercise. They meant life exercise. That is why people are thinking that just by doing bodily exercises we are doing spiritual yoga. That is not true. It's physical yoga. And it is good to do it. But don't give up meditation at the third eye center because you are doing yoga. Those yogis meditated most of the time. They practice yoga in order to keep their body fit. Somehow now people only follow the yogic position and think they are getting something spiritual. Deep breathing has been recommended for health by most doctors even. The yogis practiced holding the breath, breathing in a certain way, inhaling, exhaling and holding breath at three steps to increase our lungs capacity. If breathing is kept normal, it does not distract you when you are trying to sit behind the eyes. If you have difficulty breathing, it distracts you from sitting behind the eyes. That is why the yogis gave importance to breathing exercises. They never claimed that they are going to get spiritual success by breathing. No yogi ever claimed, not, not even Patanjali, the founder of yoga. Only by withdrawing your attention to your own self, you can find more about the self. Some people ask me how long one should meditate. It depends on how much you enjoy it. If you don't like meditation and force yourself to meditate, no use. If you only enjoy five minutes meditation, start with five minutes. If you get tired after that, stop. Don't meditate just because you have to keep a certain time. I had a friend in San Francisco, USA, who invited me to come and stay with him. 
He was a good friend, so I accepted his invitation. I traveled all the way from India to USA, arriving late, totally tired. And he said, I am very happy you have come here, now we will meditate together. I wanted to sleep. <laughs> But to keep up my face, I said, all right, we'll meditate. <laughs> He said, the prescribed time for meditation is two and a half hours in the morning. <laughs> and we have to meditate at 3 a.m. <laughs> He said, oh, the gurus have told us 3 a.m., two and a half hours. I said, all right. We both sat down in lotus position on the floor and began to meditate at three o'clock, which was, we woke up by alarm and then we sat down. I could not meditate. But from time to time, I would open the corner of my eye to see what he was doing. <laughs> I was surprised, it might be coincidence, every time I saw, he was looking like this. <laughs> I would wait, after some time I would see again. And I don't know how this coincidence happened, every time I saw, he was looking at the watch. With, gr with great torture, we completed two and a half hours. <laughs> and he said to me, what a wonderful meditation we had. <laughs> I told him it was good meditation, but it was meditation on the watch, not on yourself. <laughs> So that meditation is no good. Therefore, when you say, how much should we meditate? If you start enjoying meditation, start enjoying the great trips you can make to the galaxies inside, you will enjoy so much, you will not like to stop. Then you meditate as long as you can, depending upon how much available time you have with your physical obligations. But forced meditation does not help. One of the things that bothers most people is they fall asleep during meditation. Sleep, sleep comes so rapidly in meditation. I sometimes suggest to people, stop taking your sleeping pills, just meditate. <laughs> It's a natural tendency of the body and especially tendency of the mind to make you sleep so you can't stay here and can't go up. People have tried many methods to overcome sleep during meditation. Since we meditate in the mornings, very often we can stop meditation, have a shower, hot shower, cold shower, and meditate again, it sometimes is better. There was a master, my master's master. When he used to meditate in the beginning, he said he felt so bad when he fell asleep. He put a hook on the, on the roof of his meditation chamber, had a little rope tied up and his hair were tied with that. <laughs> so if he felt sleepy, he would wake up. <laughs> But I am telling you this so that you don't get worried that maybe you are doing not something right. It's a normal thing for the tendency of sleep to come. 
αυτό για να μην ανησυχήσει το δεν κάνετε κάτι σωστό, είναι ένα φυσιολογικό πράγμα να έρθει η επιθυμία εκεί. There is also another thing that happens, and that is called an up and down curve in which we live. Up and down curve, a sine curve, up and down in which we are life is placed. Sometimes we are happy, sometimes we are sad. Sometimes we feel very happy, healthy, sometimes we feel low. Sometimes good news comes, sometimes bad news comes. Whole life is based on that. That applies to meditation also. Sometimes meditation will be very easy and clear. And sometimes it will be very hard to meditate. Don't think there is something wrong in that. It's a natural course of events. They, this, they say there is a biorhythm that controls our body. At, in the beginning they identified three biorhythms. Biological rhythms. Yeah, biological rhythms. And they start when we are born. There's an emotional cycle that is lasting 28 days. Every 28 days we go up once and down once. There's an intellectual cycle which is 31 days. We are very clear on certain days and not so clear and confused on other days. Similarly, now they have identified seven or eight biorhythms, including the spiritual rhythm. <coughs> sometimes it is very high, sometimes low. <coughs> On high days, meditation very easy, and uh, low days very difficult. <coughs> This is consistent with the cycle of life. Now, since the cycles are different, sometimes two or three cycles may meet at the top. Then we feel very high, we are feeling very healthy and strong, we are clear in our mind, everything goes well. And sometimes these meet at the bottom. And we feel very low, depressed, and not able to, not like getting out of bed, don't want to do anything. I'm telling you these things because they are normal. Don't think there's something wrong with you. And it, and it applies to meditation also. I'm very happy you gave me the chance to come back to Corfu and to meet you and share these experiences with you.